So I shared thousands of years of story and arrived to today. With this threshold of complexity that we have to deal with, and I mostly spoke about the I in the we. I mean, how, as individuals, we can compose we's, collectives. But I would like now to continue the story with the other part of the question. How do we deal with the we and the I? And I will share my personal story here. But what do I mean with the we in the I? The we, the we in the I means that the old society, the old DNA, the old social DNA still operates in me and I guess in each of us. For instance, I speak English right now. I use a collective tool called English, a language. English, like Chinese, like French, like any language, covers a small portion of the ultimate reality. And it covers it in a very specific way. It has very old, archaic structures of consciousness in it. If I want to evolve, I will have to question those structures of consciousness, and I will give examples. So the we in the I means that if I continue to use conventional money, for instance, as an individual, even if I want to create a new city or a new world, I will perpetuate the old world. If I go into a meeting, a committee or any of those meetings that we have in Oroville, that you have in Oroville, and we behave the same way in the way we make decisions and engage, engage conversations, we will have exactly the same outcomes. Whether we may think about the future and, and uh, supermental and all these things, yes, we have them in the matrimonial or when we meditate, but in the very room, I see people suffering because they bring the same old DNA all the time because they use the same social codes. That means bring inside the old DNA of the old civilization. So that became for me a super important question. Because people trying out new collectives, I see them in many parts of the world. And of course here in Oroville, but other parts of the world, they, try, they really authentically try to create new collectives to organize themselves, to have new practices and new rules and so on. But they keep with the old DNA. So let me go into some, uh, some examples. And by the way, with this old DNA, I call it invisible architecture, because they shape us. You know, why do we use architecture? For instance, the architecture here, of an amphitheater or a cinema because we want to have conferences or we want to watch movies. So we, it has a design for specific outcomes. Why do we design restaurants, houses, hospitals, um, cars, trains? They all have a different architecture because physical architecture serves a specific outcome. Okay? Well, invisible architectures, they operate the very same way. The way we design social agreements, social codes, for instance, will create specific outcomes. If we decide to shift the language into a new way of speaking, it will design also new social outcomes. And now let me go through my own examples, because I really decided that as a researcher, I would take that for myself as my own journey. I see everyone making new social design everywhere. I don't see many people working on that, on those invisible architectures. So it, it became super important in my life to work on this. So first thing, a few examples. Um, ontology. Ontology means how we describe reality with language. The way we have a language creates the reality that we see. If we don't have a word for something, we just don't see it. And not just words, but also semantic structures. For instance, one thing that I decided to do for me to evolve, to evolve my own consciousness, I decided to speak not just English, but the derivative of English that you may have not noticed yet. It has a name, E prime, English prime, a derivative of English, E prime. Guess what? I don't use the verb to be. I used it a couple of times to quote what do you want to be? Quote, okay? But unless I made some mistakes, and maybe I did, 
I will see that on the video later. <laughs> but I didn't use the verb to be, and I don't use, I chose not to use the verb to be anymore in my life. Why? Why would I do such a thing, such a rooted you know, infrastructure in language? So let me take uh, a couple of uh, examples. If I say, um, Auroville is, is cool. If I say, um, this president is a bad guy. If I say, Roland is shy. Shy guy, yes. <laughs> okay. Whenever I say, you know, someone is this, or this thing is that, I don't leave you the choice. It is. Done. It is. Okay? Now if I say, I met Roland this afternoon, and I found him shy. You see, then I shift the whole thing, because I take responsibility for my perception, I perceive him this way from my point of view, from my subjective experience, and then I offer you this experience. I don't impose the isness to the world. So it has two consequences. The first consequence, as I said, I don't impose things. And if we start not using the verb to be, we stop imposing realities to others. The second thing, I connect to myself. Because with my own language, I will have to find new ways to describe reality, to describe my subjective experience, and share it and offer it to others. So with experience, you know, I started that about a, a year and a half ago. And it really, uh, you know, when I started, I really experienced lots and lots of challenge doing that, uh, especially in English, because in English, I learned it, you know, later as a as a teenager. However, it shifted my, my whole reality. Just my, the way I describe reality, but also my relationship with others. And I could see that just changing that into language, then I could evolve language, and I could evolve my own consciousness, and invite others to do so if they want, if they want to. But at least when I engage a relationship with people, speaking in E-prime made a whole difference. One last thing about it. To be or not to be, binary, okay? So something is or is not. It means that I describe reality in a, in a binary way, what we call in Aristotelian thinking, okay? The fact that I stopped using the verb to be invited me to describe reality as a flow, as an ever-changing flow, something that has impermanence in it. And of course, it improved my language and uh, many, many other things. So first example, how we can evolve language, uh, E prime, F prime uh, in, in French. And I guess lots and lots of other language, we have ways to improve them, not through the verb to be, because they have other structures. But my point here consists in sharing with us, with, with you here, how much we can improve a language, use verbs differently, use words differently. And then that shifts our consciousness.